There were lots of TV shows back in the 80s that would have made good computer games. Some of them were in fact made into good computer games. And then there's this. I don't really understand why anyone thought it was a good idea to make this TV show into a computer game. But we're going to look at it anyway. It's a Mastertronic Plus release and it's called Yes Prime Minister. Here's the front cover of the game and quite unimpressive it is too. It says Yes Prime Minister in a very boring font. It's got a picture of Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament in silhouette behind and the Mastertronic Plus logo and that's it. If anything was going to attract you to the game then it might be the front cover and well they didn't make much of an effort there did they. Spine's got Yes Prime Minister written on it, 299 game and the back cover's got some screenshots which again don't look entirely captivating and an intro to the game of course try surviving just five days as Prime Minister you're Jim Hacker the nation's number one you decide the strategy you make the decisions so it's a Prime Minister simulation it would appear and taking a look inside there's something different it's got yes Prime Minister written on the spine on the inside as well and uh, basically big introduction to the game how to play some controls more stuff about how to play the game introduction to the characters details about the office it's interesting it says there the game consists of a number of separate programs making up the first five days with most cassette versions you will find days 1 and 2 on side 1 and days 3, 4 and 5 on side 2 behind me loading instructions and seems to be the facility to save games as well there and more information, saving games, loading games basically really comprehensive instructions which don't fill me with any kind of encouragement that this is going to be any kind of a fun game this is the loading screen and uh, not a lot to say about it it's slightly better than the cover and uh, it's got three caricatures of the main characters from the TV show and a uh, rather ropey looking Big Ben in the middle there quite impressive noses on these cat chaps the game has loaded and as you can see it says Monday at the top of the screen there's also a rather badly or maybe quite well digitized at this point in time for the Commodore 64 picture anyway of the Prime Minister in the top right hand corner uh, and you've got three options start the game load a safe position and slow speech off uh, I think I'd rather have slow speech off rather than on so uh, let's start the game are you sure well there isn't that many options so yes oh and uh, straight away it's loading day one in so we've got a multi-load game which isn't a very good start considering it's just taken a few minutes to load that pathetic screen up so day one Monday has loaded and it took about three minutes to do so to present me with this screen here so we can see what looks like the Houses of Parliament outside the window there we're in the Prime Minister's office there's a Union Jack on the wall various other office items pretty sure they could have fit most of this stuff on one screen without having to scroll it around as you can see the joystick moves around a little pointer and we've got a clock there uh, and you can point to the arrow and click on various things or not as the case may be, not a lot happening um, there's obviously there's a note there on the desk so let's take a look at that for starters don't forget your 920 appointment with the cabinet secretary Okay. 908 at the moment uh, we've got a drawer there that's got a list of all the things that are supposed to take place in the day cabinet secretary meeting lunch at the Carlton meeting with party chairman and a bit of comedy there we're still awaiting the central heating repair man I thought you'd prefer a bit of warmth okay Let's look in the other drawer reference manual okay supposed to be amusing this stuff I presume uh, so let's head to that meeting which I, uh, we do by clicking first of all actually let's just click on this box suggestions 
blah blah blah. I assume all this stuff's supposed to be amusing, but so far I'm not amused. Um, so seriously now, let's go out the door and uh, it was the Home Secretary meeting, so that's four. Oh, the Home Secretary is extremely busy at the moment. Okay, maybe I have to wait. Okay, let's try again now. Time's spun on ten minutes there. No, it still says he's extremely busy. I'm sure it said it's supposed to be... Oh, the phone's ringing. Oh, sorry, I've messed it up. Prime Minister, have you forgotten your appointment with the Cabinet Secretary? Uh, I haven't, no. I'm just going to the wrong person. Who's that then? Sir Humphrey, maybe? Ah, okay, there we go. And I'm getting told off for being late. What have you been doing? We had a meeting arranged at 9.20 to discuss your idea of a Ministry for Women's Affairs. As you can see, the picture of the uh, Cabinet Secretary, Sir Humphrey, has popped up in the corner there. OK, so basically it's what we've got here is a, a sort of text-based um, interactive kind of game, I guess. Um, uh, OK, so you've got multiple choice answers for, to various questions. Um, so you've just got to pick the right answers, I guess. And then you get various responses, so... Depriving them of one of their favourite complaints would probably make them even more annoyed. Another thing, what sort of women do you want to appeal to? So you've got a choice of answers. You can't pigeonhole women like that. I'm a bit puzzled here. Because I seem to be choosing the answers for the person I'm talking to. And yet, I'm supposed to be the Prime Minister. Move on. Yeah, obviously there's no sound or music on this thing, so it's rather boring. I'm bored already. Uh, yeah, whatever. Carry on answering the questions. Again, I guess, I guess this is supposed to be funny. I was never a watcher of the TV show back in the 80s anyway, so I don't really get the characters. Um, but I see that seems to be the end of that meeting. An overzealous parking official has slept a wheel clamp on your daughter's car outside number 10. <laughs> okay, at least something's finally made me chuckle. The funniest thing I've heard this week. We must ask her with haste before the press hears about this. Three options. Right, okay, so you've got some actions to take here to try and resolve this situation. <laughs> Bernard doesn't like that answer. I chose answer number three, pretend it's Bernard's car. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, God, too much text. So the idea of the game is to last five days by, it would seem, going to various meetings and answering questions. Still going on, and I'm totally bored already, not even reading the answers. Okay, so let's go back to the office and see what else we've got. Okay, something's making a kind of rumbling sound. Oh, that thing there is flashing. Oh, that's a fax machine. Oh god, please tell me you can make this speed up. I thought I'd switch the slow text off. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so what else can we click on? I can't click on that. Oh, that's the behind the Union Jack flag. We've got a safe, um, which seems to be my status. So my poll rating has gone down slightly, presumably because of the silly answers I gave in that meeting. Uh, so that's sort of your progress status. And the time's ticking on again. What else have we got here? The BMA have asked if I have any suggestions for two vacancies on the Alcohol Problem Committee. Any ideas? Not really. Um, what else if I click on the clock? Oh, we've got another phone call. 
Home Secretary's online says it's urgent. Bad news, don't want to tell you the phone, might be best if you came round to my room. Speak with that and looks right, okay, so now it's supposed to supposed to be going to the Home Secretary's room. Are you bored yet? Because I'm totally bored. So I'm ha I've been having a conversation with the Home Secretary and uh, basically um, we've decided to promote some policemen to cover up the fact that they found someone drunk at a party, it seemed. Um, and I've got to do this thing now, which is a hackergram. Um, how highly do you rate the idealism of our young constables these days? Let's just go with very highly because I don't really care. <laughs> That's the problem. They watch two episodes of Hill Street Blues and think they can change the world. One whiff of a bribe in exchange for silence and they resign like a shot. Probably sell the story too. I don't really know what that means. Uh, carry on. So I'm back in the office, it's now the afternoon, I've already missed an appointment I think with a guy from the brewery place uh, and to be perfectly honest I can't be asked to place anymore, it's just really boring. Um, you know, reasonably enough graphics of this office uh, but there's way too much text to read for something that's not even a text adventure, it's not even describing locations or giving you things to do, it's just a load of questions that you have to answer in a rather pathetic multiple choice fashion and uh, I just don't want to play it anymore so definitely not worth 2 of my money and uh, that is enough <laughs>